Hello, everyone, and welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. You know, when I played in the big leagues, I played for some really good managers. Uh, I played for Frank Robinson. Uh, I played for Tony La Russa. And last night, uh, we was watching the game of the World Series, and the Atlanta Braves have a great manager. And then the Astros, they got, they got Dusty Baker. I played three years with Dusty. Dusty's a great – he's a player's manager. But there's relationships with those managers and the players. And most of those guys are all what they call – players managers they know their players they know their weaknesses and their strengths and they know when they're hurting and when they're not and those are the type of managers that players like and we have a, a guest with us today zach collins he's the preacher here at the church of christ and we're going to discuss the relationship between the elders and the preacher as as a preacher uh are you supposed to preach the truth I'm 100% supposed to preach the truth. I'm supposed to be ready to preach in season and out of season, ready to rebuke and ready to exhort. Anytime that I'm called upon to preach the truth, that's my sole responsibility. And, and that's that's what we all ought to do. And we, and, but we need to do it in love mm -hmm. as much as we possibly can. And elders should have a responsibility of making sure that the preacher is preaching the truth. And, and that is where we shepherd the flock. And... As far as a relationship with the eldership, uh, what do you think some of our responsibilities should be towards the preacher? Well, you know, I think sometimes, and let's just begin with the defining the roles, okay? In Ephesians chapter 4, you know, Paul lists those multiple different talents and abilities that have been given, and he lists the different positions within the church, and you have a pastor, but you also have an evangelist. Oh, that's, that's, I'm, good. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I want everybody, most of the denominational world yeah. thinks that the preacher is called the pastor. They struggle with this concept. And are, are you a pastor? I'm not. I'm an evangelist. Explain that. So in Ephesians chapter 4, when he's listing those responsibilities, those talents, and those different positions in the church, he makes a distinct, distinction between pastor and evangelist. Now, a pastor, when you look up that word, and you've talked about this on the program before, it's an elder that teaches. And then an evangelist is more of a ministering role. It's one who evangelizes the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm the evangelist, and you are the pastor. You're an elder. You're a bishop, 1 Timothy chapter 3, beginning there in verse 1. Now, I do not meet the qualifications in 1 Timothy chapter 3 to be a pastor, but I can meet the qualifications of being an evangelist or being a teacher or a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> But a lot of people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. and But we want to try to make sure that we're saying this, that not that we're right and you're wrong. Exactly. But we need to find out what God says about it. Because God is the one that's always right. And exactly. He's, he, he gives the qualifications for an elder, for a pastor, for a shepherd, uh, for a bishop, for a presbyter. And then he talks about the evangelist there in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And... But, we want you all to study that and look at it so that you can understand. We want to call Bible things by Bible words Amen. and do Bible things by Bible ways. And we always want to try to do what God wants us to do. In a relationship with a preacher and the elders, our responsibility is to make sure that you're spiritually taking care of the flock mm -hmm. from the pulpit. But also, when it gets to the physical part of it, the eldership should make sure that you're taken care of financially, mm -hmm. that you don't struggle, uh, that you're able to buy gas, groceries, rent, everything that, that you need. And some of the preachers out there may not be getting that from their eldership. What would you recommend that they do? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul mentions being supported as an evangelist. And 
I don't think it should ever be in the concern of a preacher to have to wonder how that preacher is going to pay his bills, how he's going to provide food for his family, put food on the table, pay gas, all the things that you listed. And I think that has to do with letting the needs be known that a preacher may have, because sometimes there's a disconnect there between the eldership and a preacher. And maybe sometimes the eldership doesn't exactly know what's going on financially for the preacher. And if they did, perhaps they could better adequately provide for him and his family. So first, I think there's got to be communication. There's got to be a level of communication and a level of trust for me to come to you or for you to come to me and ask the question, we want to support you, but we need to know how we can best support you and your family. Um, secondly, I think there needs to be a level of respect. Um, I won't ever say that there's a, a lack of respect from an eldership when it's concerning supporting a preacher, but sometimes the preacher may feel as if he is disrespected um, in the support that he is not being provided. And I've always been a firm believer, and I'm sure you are as well, that respect is shown in taking care of someone and the job that they do, and the responsibilities that they have. And so I would first and foremost, if you have a preacher out there who feels as if he is being disrespected or feels as if he is not being adequately provided for by the congregation to go to the eldership and discuss that with them. That's what they're there for. And there has to be a relationship and a friendship there to where you can sit down with them and say, hey, I mean, I know it may not be in the budget, but I've got to have some other way for me to provide for myself and my family because it's just not there right now. Uh, amen to that too. The preacher needs to be taken care of. I heard Wendell Winkler say one time that the preacher is the quarterback. And we here at the Financial Church of Christ, I know our other four elders are not here with us today, mm -hmm. but we meet on the first Sunday of every month and on the third Monday, uh, Sunday of every month. And we invite Zach into our meetings. So there, there has to be some communication there, some great communication. And uh, the preacher needs to be in the... Now, there may be some times when you need to talk about the preacher and you just ask him to leave. And every time that we've ever done that, they there's been no problem with them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the elders need to have a relationship with their preacher. Now... Zach and I, every once in a while, go out and have Bible studies with people. Mm -hmm. And he knows that any time that he has a Bible study, so he can call me 24-7, and I'm ready to go. And I'm sure that the other elders here at the Painful Church of Christ feel the exact same way, because that's the most important thing that we do. Can a preacher get caught up in a habit of preaching on a, a hobby uh, one subject and get caught up into it. And uh, there are some hot button topics out there mm -hmm. in our brotherhood, marriage, divorce, remarriage, uh, women, uh, preachers, mm -hmm. uh, homosexuality, uh, all those kinds of things. Those things need to be preached on. Yes. But there can be a line there that we don't just preach on it every single time we right. get up in the pool. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to be too routine in your preaching cycle. And, you know, one of the things I've had to learn as a young preacher was simply I need to be more willing and more able to preach about topics that are current events. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes to plan. I plan out everything that I preach. I have a schedule in which I plan it. Every day I have something that I'm doing toward that Sunday or that Wednesday that's coming up where I'm teaching or preaching the Word of God. And while I like to be very organized, and I like to have things planned out. I've also got to recognize that I've got to leave room and I've got to leave freedom for current events to be discussed and those hot topic issues that you were talking about. But I think sometimes it can be very possible for a preacher to get stuck in a rut where he preaches the same subject or the same topic over and over. Maybe he's hitting too much on the fundamentals. Now, we, we want to preach the fundamentals. And, you know, every Sunday, the last Sunday of the month here at our congregation, we do a fundamental Sunday where we discuss the fundamentals and we preach fundamental concepts that we need to double down on so that the congregation here can grow spiritually. And that is one of the key things, subjects that we need to talk about, getting the congregation to grow spiritually. And mm -hmm. that, a lot of that comes from the pulpit. But 
there has to be some direction from the eldership to let you know sometimes, okay, we may be doing a fundamental. We need to change that because we're going to have a lot of people in the audience that may not be New Testament Christians. And we may have to sometimes mm -hmm. preach to our audience and be able to change on the cuff. And I, that's not an easy thing to do. No. But if you ever go to a Bible study with me, you know, oh, you, I'm on the cuff all the, <laughs> <laughs> on the cuff all the time. So you read the room. You read the room. And I thought, you know, it was very uh, fitting this past Sunday we discussed the question, what must I do to be saved? And we had a lot of visitors here. We had a lot of visitors here. And um, there were some things that I did in that sermon that I had not planned to do. But then I read the room and saw the audience that we had and kind of customized it to the visitors that we had there. Hey, guys, thank you again. This is a wrap-up for our first episode. Stay tuned next Friday for part two. But thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.